but we do see the Russians move in a lot more heavy equipment than they have in the past couple of days. And actually, as I'm speaking to you right now, I don't know how well we're going to be able to see this in the dark, but there's actually a massive column of Russian armored vehicles that are sort of going past us right now as we speak. I'm going to pan to them for a second. We've also seen some really heavy rocket launchers, Frederica, as well pass here. What you're seeing right now, I have to speak really loudly, that's a, that's a main battle tank of the Russians. That's a T-72 battle tank, this one as well. So we're sort of seeing a column of tanks, and those right now are taking a turn, and they're actually heading towards the front line near Kharkiv, where you just said, where the heaviest fighting is going on right now. So as we speak here, you can see the invasion that Russia is conducting of Ukrainian territory going on and, and obviously moving forward as the Russians moving more heavy equipment towards Ukraine. This is something, Frederica, that we've seen throughout the entire course of the day, that um, more of this heavy equipment has been moving towards the front line, towards Ukrainian territory. And again, it's not clear whether or not this means that the Russians need more of this because it's becoming more difficult for them. But it's certainly a fact that we are definitely seeing a lot more of this stuff going towards Ukrainian territory. Um, also, again, as I said, a lot of big multiple rocket launchers coming past, uh, rockets being fired. This is definitely sort of a very common occurrence right now. One of the other interesting things is also is that a lot of these troops are actually parked in small villages around here. And it also shows, Frederica, that the Russians, if they are having trouble with their military campaign, they certainly still do seem to have the capacity to escalate all of this. We're seeing a lot of these kind of vehicles parked around here at the ready to go anytime. And as you can see, the Russians moving more forces now towards uh, the Kharkiv region. You can see, I don't know how well you're gonna be able to see this, but if we go back in the distance over there, you can see the tanks turning a corner over there. And what you're seeing right now is them going straight towards Ukrainian territory. This is the last checkpoint that the Russians have before you reach Ukrainian territory and before you get to that region of Kharkiv. Those Russian forces are now taking that last turn past the last checkpoint, and a couple of miles down the road, you're already in Ukrainian territory, and then later you get to the front line in Kharkiv. So, again, whether or not they're having any sort of difficulties, whether or not this campaign is stalling, very difficult to say from our vantage point, but what I can tell you is that the Russians definitely losing, uh, moving a lot more equipment right now towards that front line, and it really is something, Frederica, that we have been seeing throughout the course of this entire day. As we are in the, in the town of Belgorod, which is really one of their main places where they've set up these garrisons and, and, and have a large troop concentration from which they keep feeding that front line down in Kharkiv, which, which as you've noted, the U.S. Mm -hmm. says is right now one of the sort of main battlefields, Frederica. And so, Fred, for now, it appears, just as we were watching with you, these armored vehicles here at nightfall, we've been watching you for days now uh, in that general region. In daylight, I recall one of your live shots where a number of, you know, Russian vehicles were making its way, you know, across or to, you know, across the border toward Ukraine. Is it your estimation that perhaps there's an increase of that kind of activity now that it's nightfall in comparison to what you've seen over the course of the few days? Yeah, it's, it's interesting to see because it, it really is since, since the sun has set here that we've seen a lot more of that uh, motion. I don't know whether or not they, they move at night or in the day or whether it's, a, it's something that they do you know, throughout the course of the day. But I would say that certainly that kind of a large tank column that we've seen just now there, I really haven't seen much of that over the past couple of days. So it certainly does appear to us here that there is a lot more motion going on towards that front line. And if you saw those vehicles, I mean, a lot of the vehicles just passed us. They were T-72 type. I don't know if they were T-72 or T-80 main battle tanks. Those are, those are really powerful vehicles. And um, to see the Russians move that many of those um, in one column towards the front line is certainly something that, at least for us right now, is remarkable. We've seen sort of motion back and forth, a lot of infantry fighting vehicles that are sort of lighter armored vehicles, but main battle tanks to have a column that large move past is certainly not something that we've seen a lot of so far. So. Again, it's very difficult to tell whether or not that means, uh, you know, that they're encountering more resistance than they thought or whether or not this is, a, this is a troop rotation that they've been planning to do. But it's certainly not something that we've seen regularly and quite remarkable to have that just as we're live on TV.